Mr. Sherlock Holmes, I presume. Correct. With whom do I have the pleasure? Emilio Estevo. Happy to make your acquaintance. I am here on behalf of Mycroft, your brother. He is on his way to Cordona. In the meantime, he requests your assistance with a sensitive matter. My orders are to provide you with the details. I'm afraid I don't have time for this now. I hope that you will reconsider. If you do, I'll be here. It's a bizarre object, and yet oddly familiar. Did you just remember something? Yes. A room full of curiosities and artifacts. I think I can find it in the manor. Sherlock. So, you continue to pursue the imaginary. I had hoped you might have got all this out of your system by now. Mycroft. What are you doing here? Get out of my house! It's my house, actually. I've come to bring you back. I have no interest in returning, let alone with you. I know you lied about Mother all these years, claiming she was merely ill, but she was unstable. She never had tuberculosis. She was not recuperating, but mentally deteriorating, and you never once thought to tell me. How dare you? I shall not indulge this petulant tantrum. You can just tire yourself out and then slink back to London with your tail between your legs. Just tell me everything. I'm an adult now. I Show me the basic courtesy of an explanation. You know I will find out eventually. The goal was stability, and that's what you got. The right thing for everyone was to try and move on from her passing. The consequences of one's actions determines what is right or wrong. Yes, exactly. The ends justify the means. After leaving Cordona, Sherlock, you had a normal childhood. In London, I was able to support you, guide you, shape you into a fine and productive young man. You have so much potential, so much to offer society. But that's not the end. Now I've found the truth, and it has shattered everything I knew about her, about you, and about myself. I feel unstable because of you. Your actions were not justified. Lying never is. Oh, grow up, Sherlock. It was a white lie which has as much use in the realm of the interpersonal as the international. It is time you come to accept that some things are bigger than yourself. Oh, you are full of it. You like to pretend you care about the big picture, but it's just an ego trip. You like knowing more than others. You like greasing palms and rubbing shoulders with the rich and powerful. You like having eyes and ears everywhere. The fact it helps the nation is incidental, because all you care about is yourself. It's true. I have agents everywhere, including Cordona. If you weren't so damn stubborn, you'd realize that means I'm only here for you. Just look at this thing. It's huge. I remember returning home with a pair of perfect sticks. We wanted to turn them into training swords. Oh, that's right. We stood there, frozen, staring at something huge in the main hall. It was a giant aquarium with a living mermaid in it. 
Impossible. It must have been something else. Oh, of course. That mortifying hoax presently taking up space in our front yard. Well, fine. Your memory's better than mine. But I'm sure we started examining it immediately. And someone else was around, too. It was my mother. She asked what I thought of the artifact. You were really concentrating and holding something in your hand. I inspected it with a magnifying glass and was able to confirm it was made of two different skeletons. The mermaid was a fake. And so it was time to smash the thing. Your mother took a hammer and... <laughs> Slow down, John. That's not how it happened. I remember other people joined us. The workers took the artifact and placed it into the Cabinet of Curiosities. It became part of Mother's collection of fakes. She always said that the truth lies in the details. This mermaid helped me to learn that. Ah yes, my mother's studio. She was an authenticator and this was her Cabinet of Curiosities. I never saw the point. What does it matter if some artifact is real or not? It still exists. One of the most ridiculous fakes I ever saw. Its owner insisted it was a polar bear. He thought the white paint on the brown fur wasn't noticeable. I remember this cosy blanket. It was perfect for... Wigwam! Oh, that was a joy to build them. Imagining ourselves as wayfarers on the other side of the world. <sighs> Another fake Holy Grail. Its owner claimed to be the heir of King Arthur. Scarcely believable. He also insisted a deadly rabbit was hunting him. Watkinson and Holman, Chapter 1, by Wallace Diorum. Oh, Mycroft. He always acts so serious, but then reads tripe like this. John, if I remember correctly, you couldn't put this book down. So many calling cards. Mycroft liked to keep useful people at hand. Reliable and driven. I recognize Mycroft's handwriting. Officer Luciano J. Placido. Carefully opened. Dated 24th of April, 1869. This drawer was always closed. Only Mycroft knew how to open it. I remember we tried to break it open and spy on him, but alas, had no success. Maybe today's the day. Oh, Sherry. Eighteen fifty-two, Bingley, West Yorkshire. This photo caused a lot of fuss. My mother spent some time to prove it was a fake.
the so-called mummy of a Persian princess. The defrauders did good work, but missed one small detail. It's the mummy of a man. And this one was brought from a German museum. They claimed it belonged to Vikings. Nonsense, of course. Vikings never had horns on their helmets. Clearly, it was deliberately torn. I wonder why someone would do that. The Tulpa. Studies in Tibetan Mentalism. An impressive number of bookmarks. Someone was rather obsessed with this subject. Mother said this was among the hunting trophies of a Scottish Viscount. So he tried to persuade everyone that his forest was inhabited by these beasts. It would have been thrilling if it were actually true. It's a pity how many amazing things are missing from this room. Ah, the memory comes back. We snuck about watching him. He closed the drawer and went to the hall. We were like two shadows crawling behind him. He opened the door to the postman, and they exchanged documents. If it was a real postman, of course. The painting on the wall was slightly a tilt. He stopped and straightened it. Then he threw some logs into the fire and sat in his armchair to read. It's as boring now as it was then. I'm sorry, Sherry, but I think that's it. Wait, John, we never use the fireplace in the mornings. What if...
A bit of juniper in the fireplace created a soothing atmosphere. It's the little things, isn't it? I think this is what we're looking for. Made it. So what's there? Gifted by Queen Victoria herself. Single malt whiskey. My cross favourite. Dossiers on the most influential people on Cordona. Mycroft always had a habit of building files on everyone he met. Otto Richter. This one is rather thick. Mycroft can be truly dogged in his research. Look, it's Roger. This jolly old man's well preserved. Even looks refreshed. I doubt he drew much interest at the auction. That's for the best. I'd be upset if he fell into the wrong hands. When you're finished here, can we build a wigwam from the blankets? Like in the good old days. The full plate armour of Sir Robert Swanford. I was told my father won it in a wager. Armour is armour, but look at his sword. Oh, how badly I wanted to wield the blade. Maybe you take it instead of your pistol. I'm starting to remember something.
I used this ladder to look at the top shelf, right? On the day of Mother's breakdown upstairs. Right you are, Sherry. We heard a noise. I can't recall of exactly what. And we didn't have a great view from behind the statue. Books and papers from the table somehow ended up on the floor. Now it's coming to the surface. I feel it. Sherry, let's go outside. Wait, did you hear that? Come here, Sherry. You call this progress? Charlatan, amateur. I'm not letting you anywhere near my mother again. So there was a quarrel between them. I heard a noise in the hall. Let's check it out. Sherry, look! We've got a parcel here. Hurry up and let's see what's inside. that comes with a mask. We can't miss this, Sherry. <laughs> 